Hi, this is Dave from Notes and Volts, and in this video, we're going to finish up the Twitch Switch project by configuring the buttons for your setup and integrating it into OBS Studio. All right, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is modify the buttons to match our setup. So the way we do this is we open a new text document. Now as I press the various keys, you'll see the letters A to K show up in the text document. And that's the default setting for this but obviously we're gonna to need to change that for our particular stream setup. The way you change the keys is you go into key edit mode and the way you get into that is to hold down the stream, the mic and the PC keys for three seconds. Okay, and now we're in key edit mode. So let's take a look at the directions. So if we want to escape without saving our changes, press the mic or PC key. If we want to save our changes, we need to hold the stream key down for about three seconds. Now in key edit mode, there's a few commands we can use. So to change the key, we use scenes one to four. So scene one will go down one character Scene 2 will go up a character, Scene 3 will go down 10 characters, and Scene 4 will go up 10 characters. And that's useful if you want to jump far ahead in the alphabet. We also have Scene 5 and Scene 6 set up as modifier buttons. So the modifier keys are Control, Alt, and Shift. And in OBS Studio, you can have up to two modifier keys along with your normal character. So if I press scene five, I will uh, change the modifier down one step. If I press key six, I will go up one step. And we'll see that in action right now. So the first thing I need to do to edit a key is to select the button I want to edit. So we'll start with the stream button. So I'll press that. Now you can see currently the key is the character A and the modifier is none. So let's uh, try to change the key. So I'm going to go up one. And you can see as I press the scene two button, I go up one letter. And if I press scene one, I go down one. Also, I can go up 10 or down 10. Okay. Now the modifier keys, if I want to change those, I use scene five and scene six. So I'll press scene six to go up one. So you notice now my modifier is control. Up another one, my modifier is shift. Up one more, now it's control and shift. So you can see by pressing that, you can cycle through all the available modifier combinations and if you want no modifiers just the character just set it to none now just as an, as an experiment we'll escape out of this by hitting mic or pc and you can see the changes are not saved it's back to normal so we haven't changed anything okay so let's go back and we'll actually make some changes so once again, stream, mic, and PC. And we're back into key edit mode. So I'm going to change this stream key. And I'm going to leave the key type as A, but I'm going to set the, mod the modifier to control and shift. Okay, so there we are. So that's what I want. So I'm going to hold the stream button to save. 
And there you go. So now the changes are saved. So I'm going to go through all the buttons and I'm going to set them to control shift and a letter key. So let's do the mic key next. So I'll go back into key edit mode. And we'll select the mic key. So right now it's set at B with modifier none. So I'm going to set it to the letter S. Let's go up 10. All right, there's S and I'm going to set my modifier to control and shift and then we'll save. Okay, and it's that easy. So when you're selecting your hotkey combination, you want to make sure that it's not a combination that's going to do something in Windows. So certain combinations may change the icon size or move something around or open something you don't want. So make sure the keys that you select don't do any of that. So I'm going to select A, S, D, F, G, uh, basically the middle row of the keyboard. Okay, so now we have all our keys set. Now let's look at one more thing we can do. So if you hold down the scene one, two, three, four keys all at once, we'll get into something called utility mode. Now in utility mode, there are two parameters you can set. The first one is debounce and the second one is delay. So the debounce parameter is the number of milliseconds the twitch switch will wait to make sure that the switch is actually closed. So when you close a switch it doesn't just close immediately it will actually bounce a few times before it settles to its final position. The microcontroller in the twitch switch is fast enough to actually read those individual bounces as different key presses. So you press the button once, you may register three or four key presses, which is not what you want. So the debounce delay kind of takes care of that. I found 60 to be a good, a good setting for these buttons. So that's what it comes default set at. So you may not ever need to change these, but you can experiment them with them if you like. Um, to change the debounce time, you use the scene one to four keys. So as I push this, it goes up, this goes down, and I can jump up 10 or down 10. The second parameter is the delay parameter. And what that does is it inserts a small delay between the modifier key and the actual character key. And I found that programs like OBS sometimes require that because if the keys are pressed simultaneously, it won't register as a key press. Um, as a human, it's very rare that you would actually push the two keys at the exact same time, but for a microcontroller, it can do that easily. So by adding that little delay between the modifier and the key, it adds a little human delay to the key press and it helps OBS to detect it. Uh, I, once again, I found uh, 100 milliseconds to be a good value so you don't really need to set that but it's there if you want to experiment okay so I don't really want to change any of these uh, so I'll press mic or PC to get out if you want to save it remember hold the stream key okay so that's our twitch switch programmed all our keys are set so now we can go into OBS 
Studio and set it up there. So close your text document and let's open up OBS Studio. Okay, so here we are in OBS Studio. And you can see I've set up four scenes and in each scene, I just have one text object showing the scene name. I also have my desktop audio and my mic audio. So to set up our Twitch switch in OBS Studio, you need to go to the settings button or you can go to file settings. It does the same thing. And we'll go to the hotkeys tab. So we'll start with our streaming button. So we, you can see here we have a start streaming and a stop streaming setting. So all I need to do is push my stream button on my Twitch switch and it will automatically insert the characters that I selected. So you can see control plus shift plus A and that's what I set it. So you can see this will start the streaming but I want the button to act as a toggle. So when I press it once, I'll start streaming. When I press it again, I'll stop. The way you do this is to go to the stop streaming tab and push the same key. So that way it will act as a toggle between these two values. Now let's go down to our audio settings. So here on our desktop audio, we have a mute and unmute. And for our mic, we have a mute and unmute. So for our two settings here, once again, I want to make it a toggle. So I'll put the same setting in each, each, in each box. So desktop audio is PC. So we'll push that button, control shift D and unmute we'll do the same thing control shift d and for mic we'll use the mic button on the twitch switch control shift s and control shift s and remember you can change these to whatever you want okay so let's test that out first of all so we'll hit apply so you can see here the uh, desktop audio and the mic now, if I press my PC or desktop audio button, you can see it mutes. And if I press it again, it unmutes. Great, that works. Now we'll do the same for the mic. Here's the mic on, press it, the mic is muted. Press it again, the mic unmutes. Great. If I try it with the stream key, what I'll get right now is an error because I haven't set my stream key up, but you can see that it is working. Okay, so let's set up our scenes now. So back to settings, hotkeys, and here are our four scenes. So the first important um, parameter we need to set is the switch to scene key. So for scene one, I'm gonna use the scene one button. All right, and for scene two, I'll use the scene two button. And for scene three, scene three button. And scene four, we'll use the scene four button. And we'll apply and we'll make sure that works. Okay, so here's scene one. When I hit the scene two, there we go to scene two, hit scene three. Scene three and scene four, we go to scene four and we'll go back to scene one. So that works, that's great. And you could set up to eight individual scenes with your eight scene buttons. Now, here's another thing you can do. So just cause these buttons are labeled as scene buttons, you don't have to use them as that. So here's something I found useful. Let's go back to our hotkey setting. Now, if you notice in each scene, we have our one text object. And if you have many objects, so you may have a camera object, a desktop object, you know, whatever you have, it will show up under the scene list. So let's 
use our scene five key as a key to enable or disable the text in all scenes. Okay, so we'll use uh, under show scene one text, we'll use button five and hide scene one text button five. So that makes it a toggle and we'll do the same for every scene. And finally scene four, there we go. Okay, so let's see what happens when we do this. So here we are. And once again, we can switch the scenes with our one to four scene buttons. But notice in each scene, I can use button five to turn the text on or off. Which may be handy. So what I do on my stream is I use some of the keys as scene switch buttons and then I dedicate three buttons to my three cameras. So in each scene I can turn on or off any of the three cameras which is great and I use one as a kind of a escape button so if I have to go AFK I can hit that button and it will pop up a scene just showing um, be right back screen. So there you go. That's basically how you set it up. It's pretty simple. And the good thing is you only have to do it once unless you change your settings. So once again, there's our audio mute, our stream, and our different scene buttons. Okay, I think that about covers it. I hope you've had fun building the Twitch switch and learned some stuff along the way. As always, visit notesandvolts.com for more projects and tutorials, and I'll see you next time. <music>